This lesson is concerning slopes of secants and how we use them to calculate average rate of change. A rate of change is a ratio, and it's a ratio of the change in the dependent variable, often called y, to the change in the independent variable, often called x. And rates of change are usually written as what are called unit rates. So it's a rate of so much per one unit. And so that means that shows how the dependent variable changes per a one unit change in the independent variable. For example, if we had a car that traveled 240 kilometers in three hours, we would divide 240 by three and get a unit rate of change of 80 kilometers per hour. So that means that the average rate of change, it, the car went 80 kilometers per one hour of time. Now an 80 kilometer per hour rate is only an average over the three hours. For example, the car might have been stopped at a, a traffic light for a minute, and during that minute, uh, it had a, a rate of change of zero kilometers per hour. Or perhaps the car at some point passed another vehicle, and during that passing time, it was going 110 kilometers per hour. The 80 kilometers per hour is just an average over the three hours. The rate of change at an instant in time, and that's what the speedometer shows at a particular point in time, is called an instantaneous rate of change, and that will be handled in another lesson. On the second page, we're gonna, I'm going to show you what average rate of change looks like on a graph. If we have a function here, the blue y equals f of x function, the average rate of change between two points is just the slope of the secant line. So here are the two points, p and q here, and if we find the slope of the secant between points P and Q, then that's what's de defined to be the average rate of change between points P and Q. A couple ways to calculate average rate of change or slope, it's the change in Y, the vertical change, over the change in X, the horizontal change, so delta Y over delta X, or you can use this slope formula if you know the uh, X and Y coordinates of the first point and the second point, then the difference between the y's, or change in y, is y2 minus y1. We subtract these two y coordinates, divided by the difference between the x coordinates, which is x2 minus x1. So either of these formulas can be used to find the average rate of change between one point and another on any graph. In this example, on the third page, we have an object that's free falling and its distance obeys the formula distance is 4.9 times the time squared. We're asked to find the average velocity from 2 to 3 seconds and also 3 to 4 seconds. So we're going to fill out a table here to display the distances at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 seconds. So I would just substitute 0 in place of time and go 4.9 times 0 squared. And of course that will be 0. If I put 1 in place of time, I get 4.9 because 4.9 times 1 squared is 4.9. If I want to find 2, and here's an example of one of those calculations, I would put 2 in place of time. So I do 4.9 times 2 squared. Now 2 squared is 4, remember your order of operations, and multiply that 4 by 4.9 and you'll get 19.6. So that's the distance the object travels after 2 seconds. Filling in the other values in the chart, we get 44.1 for a distance after 3 seconds, 78.4 after 4, and 122.5 after 5. Notice it's going further every additional second, and that's because it's accelerating. Now we're going to plot those points, so there's 0, 0, 1, 4.9, 2, 19.6, and plotting the other three points, and drawing a smooth curve between them. That's what our curve looks like. And it's actually half of a parabola. This would actually be the vertex of the parabola and it's opening upward. Now I'm going to refer to uh, these points at 2, 3, and 4 seconds as R, Q, and P just so that I can refer to them easily because we're going from 2 to 3 and then 3 to 4 seconds so I'll refer to them as, as points R, Q, and P. And I'll do the same in the graph. Now we're going to use the slope formula to find the uh, average rate of change between 2 and 3 seconds or points R and Q. So there's my subscript RQ, slope of RQ. 
And so we would subtract 44.1 and 19.6, that's actually the y coordinates or second coordinates or distance coordinates, and divided by the difference between the independent variable coordinates, which are time, so I'm subtracting uh, 3 and 2 here. And if we evaluate that, we get 24.5. Now the units would me be meters per second because the units of distance are meters, so this is meters on top, and the units for the time are seconds, so that's why it's meters per second. Now on the chart, on the graph, I'm going to draw a uh, a rate triangle, and this rate triangle shows the slope of the secant between points R and Q, and the slope of that line segment is actually 24.5 meters per second. Here's the one second. The vertical distance between this point and this point is the 24.5. So it's actually 24.5 is the rise and the run is 1. So 24.5 divided by 1 is the slope of 24.5. So that's the average rate of change, average velocity between 2 and 3 seconds. Now between points Q and P between times 3 and 4, so we would subtract 78.4 and 44.1 in the numerator and 4 and 3 in the denominator and that gives us a average rate of change of 34.3 meters per second between points Q and P or between times 3 and 4 seconds. Now that slope right there is 34.3. Notice that this line segment is a little bit steeper than that and that's because the object's accelerating. You can also look at a graph and look at slopes of secants to determine which one is uh, steeper and of course this one should be steeper because that average velocity is faster than that one almost by 10 meters per second. Another example on uh, this page a Corvette races down a fi approximately 500 meter strip in 14.4 seconds. Its distance and D is the distance measured in meters from the starting line after t seconds is given by this formula. D of t is 2 times the time squared plus 6 times the time. And we're asked to find the average velocity from 13.9 to 14.4 seconds. Now we'll find the distance after 13.9 and also 14.4. So we fill in 13.9 in place of time here, and that's that part right there, and then time here six times the time in the end plus. And so 13.9 squared times 2 is 386.42, and 13.9 times 6 is 83.4. And then we add those together. So the distance traveled after 13.9 seconds is 469.82 meters. Now we'll find the distance after 14.4 seconds in the same fashion. And so we see that actually it's just crossed the finish line by just over a meter. After 14.4 seconds it's gone 501.12 meters. Now to find the average velocity between this time and this time we would subtract the distances, displacements, the 501.12 and 469.82, and divide that by the difference in time. Well, from 13.9 to 14.4 seconds, it's, that's a half a second. And so we get an average velocity of, and this is 31.3 in the numerator, divided by 0.5. So that works out to 62.6 .6 meters per second. So the average velocity from 13.9 to 14.4 seconds is 62.6 .6 meters per second. Now one other thing before we finish the lesson here. Notice that this calculation over here, and this leads into something you'll do later when you get into, uh, actually leads into uh, some of the introductory ideas of calculus and one of the formulas you use in the calculus. The 501.12 is the displacement after 14.4 seconds, so I could have called that d of 14.4, that's the displacement at 14.4 seconds, minus the displacement at 13.9 seconds, that's the 469.82, over the difference in the two times. So notice this is the, the displacement at the end time minus the displacement at the first time, divided by the difference in the two times, and of course that certainly is still 0.5 and this would be the 31.3. So that's a formula you will see later in uh, an intro, intro, introductory calculus course when you start to get into some calculus. And that's the end of the lesson.